morning and welcome to Midpoint. I'm Miss Phoebe and I'm so happy you're here today. Each week we learn about a story from the Bible and if it's from the Bible, it must be true. Today's story is also from the Bible, so that means it's also true. Good job. So let's have a seat and get started. It's time for a Bible story. A long time ago in the land of Israel, there lived three young guys named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Whoa, whoa, hold on, wait a minute. What are those names? Did you say their names were Sad Rat, Mean Hat, and a Bendy Goat? Uh, no, not even close. Their names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they were some pretty solid dudes. They loved God with all their heart, and things were going pretty well for them. Until one day, all of that changed. Wait, let me guess what happened. They were taken from their homeland by an invading army. Well, actually, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Do, do you know the story already? Whoa, really? Crazy. That was just a random guess. What are the odds of that, huh? Well, uh, you're right. Israel was invaded by the wicked King Nebuchadnezzar. Whoa, that stinks. And double woe, because the names in this story are crazy. I know, right? King Nebuchadnezzar invaded their country and took a bunch of people captive, and then brought them back to his home country called Babylon. Hold up, hold up, okay. I know the names in this story are a little wonky, but you've got to be kidding me. He was from a place called Babyland? That sounds awesome. An entire country full of adorable babies? Actually, that doesn't sound awesome. I bet it smelled like a giant diaper. Ugh. No, not Babyland. It was called Babylon, and I'm sure it smelled just fine. Gotcha. So what happened when they got to Babylon? Well, they were trying to adjust to where they live now. I mean, one day they're chilling at home in Israel, and the next day they're in a totally different country. They didn't know anybody there, they don't speak the language, and on top of all that, they were forced to work as slaves. Yikes, that is pretty rough, man. I bet they were like so, so super scared. I mean, they're in a completely different country, they don't know anybody, they're completely on their own. Man, I would be totally freaked out. Actually, they didn't freak out. They knew God was with them, so they kept on like they had before. Every day they would pray and worship God. Hey, that's great to hear. Sounds like things could turn around, huh? Well, things did change, but not really in the way that you might expect. One day, King Nebuchadnezzar decided to have a huge statue of himself built. He wanted to be 90 feet tall and made out of gold. Seriously, a 90 foot golden statue of himself? Man, what a waste of a statue. I'd rather have a 90 foot gold statue of something awesome, like a really fat hamster. Oh, or like a unicorn playing guitar? I agree, those would be pretty sweet, but no. He wanted it to be of himself, and once the statue was built, he ordered people from all around to come and see it. He had musicians set up all around the statue and gave the order that when they started to play, everyone would bow down and worship him. Okay, that's a little weird. Uh, so what does this have to do with our three amigos exactly? Well, that's where things get interesting. 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were some of the people that were ordered to come and see the statue. But as you can imagine, they weren't very interested in worshiping King Nebuchadnezzar. They only worshiped God. So what happened? Just like the king ordered, the band kicked in and everybody bowed down to the statue except for three people. You want to guess who? Uh, oh, Larry, Curly, and Mo. Swing and a miss. It was actually Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And as you can imagine, the king was not very happy with them disobeying his orders. But he liked Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, so he gave them a second chance to change their minds and worship him. The band kicked in again, everybody else bowed down, but... Let me guess, they didn't bow. No sir, Bob. Yeesh, I bet he really did not like that. No, he did not. King Nebuchadnezzar was furious that they had refused to worship him, but they held firm and told the king that they would only worship the one true God. Oh boy, I bet they got punished pretty bad, huh? What they get, like a million spankings? No, much worse than that. The king's guards grabbed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and took them to a huge fiery furnace, a giant oven with flames blazing out all over it. Good grief, that thing is no joke. It's gotta be like a million degrees, or like a bazillion Celsius, or like five Kelvin. Well, look at you, Mr. Science. And yes, it was very hot. The king decided to give them one more chance to bow down to him. And if they didn't, he was going to throw them into the fiery furnace. Whoa, he was seriously gonna like kill them? Straight up. So what'd they do? I mean, did they just give in and bow down? I mean, listen, that would be totally understandable. I mean, look at that oven thing, man. They'd get roasted like marshmallows in there. That would be terrifying. That's true. It was a pretty scary situation, but they trusted in God and they weren't afraid. They knew that God was more powerful than King Nebuchadnezzar, and if God was on their side, they didn't have to be afraid. So when the king said one last time to bow down, they refused. Uh-oh, so did he throw them in the furnace? Nope. Instead, the king ordered the furnace to be made seven times hotter than it already was, and then throw them in. What? How do you even do that? That's gotta be like as hot as the sun, or like an atomic bomb, or my new mixtape. Uh, no. But it got so hot that when the guards opened the door, the heat was so strong that they were instantly killed. Oh, look, the guards are dead. Now is your chance. Run for it, guys. Well, there were other guards. Kind of an expendable resource back then. Oh, that's kind of sad. So another set of guards grabbed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, dragged them over to the furnace, and threw them inside. King Nebuchadnezzar and everybody else watched as they closed the door and waited. But what happened next? Nobody ever expected. There in the furnace, in those blazing hot flames, stood four men. Wait, what? They didn't die? Like an instant terrible death of burning and dying? Nope. The guards and King Nebuchadnezzar could not believe their eyes. There were four figures standing in the flames, totally fine. Hold up, wait a second. There were four people? I thought you said they threw in three people. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's only three. True, but there was a fourth person in the furnace with them. It was Jesus. What? Yep. Jesus was with them in the fiery furnace and protected them from the flames. King Nebuchadnezzar told them to come out and they walked out completely unharmed. Their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. That is incredible. So that's why they weren't afraid of the king, huh? They trusted in God so much and knew that he would be with them when the times got tough. Exactly. That day, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego showed King Nebuchadnezzar and everyone in Babylon that God was with them and no matter what came their way, they didn't have to fear. That is totally stinking awesome. You bet. The end. I really enjoyed today's story and I hope you did too. The great thing about the Bible is that it's literally a big instruction book so we know what to do in life. God loves you and I love you and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.